See the bowls and the instruments here? I am a sound healer. Uh, uh, labels are labels, but if you technically want to know the work I do, I work with sound and uh, I work with shamanism and I have many modalities that I work with, but I kind of combine everything and uh, I love working with frequency. I love playing with how can I, you know, reform my situation, my reality, and how can I change that vibration or raise it up. So there's many ways we can raise our vibration. Meditation is one of the most powerful ways. Uh, meditation is great because there's all these sounds going on all the time. It's like, it's like a bunch of radio stations playing at the same time, but when you, when you meditate, when you silence yourself, you're able to tap into the infinite, right? The infinite, and, and it's like everything comes available to you. And, you know, sometimes when you're thinking too much, you're like only focused on this one thing and it's all mental chatter, mental chatter. So meditation is super powerful. Uh, a way to connect to frequency. So uh, I like to, to express uh, frequency is not just what we hear audible, audible sounds. Um, does anybody know the human hearing range? The human hearing range is <clears throat> from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz frequency. So uh, we all know that there's a thing called like dog whistles that we cannot hear but a dog can hear. There's several frequencies beyond our range that are out there that we can't even tap into, that we can't even hear. Uh, the visible spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum. Did, did anybody know that light is actually measured in frequency, in hertz, right? So radio waves, gamma waves, ultra waves, all that is measured in frequency. So all the light that we're seeing that is coming into our eyes, everything is a frequency. So the entire planet of our existence, of everything that we gauge our reality with, right, is all measured by what our frequency is. So what is important, what is happening right now on the planet, collectively, uh, I want to share a quote. Albert Einstein said, <clears throat> the field is the sole govern governing agency of the particle. I'll say it again. The field is the sole governing agency of the particle. So what Albert Einstein is saying in that expression, the field, the frequency field, the collective energetic field that we're living in is governing, is like responsible, the agency of a form, our reality. So whatever the, the collective vibration is, our reality is going to show us exactly physically what's going on and right now obviously we look on the planet we have lots of famine lots of wars lots of really crazy stuff going on lots of crazy stuff so as a collective you know I, I, I really truly feel that the collective consciousness on the planet is has a dis-ease going on in the mind there's a lot of dissonance there's a lot of chaos in people's minds and it's actually showing up in their lives. So if we're doing that on a large global scale, of course it's going to show, you know, murders and all kinds of bombings and all kinds of this stuff. Uh, so what, what, is, what is the most important thing for us to do, we can't, we can't just kind of go change everybody's frequency. We can't just go up like to the mirror. In a sense, you're looking in the mirror, you don't go up to a mirror and you don't try to change the smile on the mirror. You have to smile before your reflection smiles back, you know what I'm saying? So what we have to do, we have to really recognize that we're responsible for our own energy. We can't change everything out there, but what we can do is we can be responsible for what we're putting out into the collective soup, in a sense. We're all in like a big bowl of soup. So it's very, very important that our ingredients that we're putting into the collective soup are really good. So that's the best way to help out the situation. And uh, so what I do with my practice, what I love to share is how we can implement practices in, in our own life that we can raise that, uh, that, that product that we're delivering to the pub public. Uh, so I, I like to use sound, actual audible sounds, but I also use the intentional frequencies, that, the thoughts, right? The thoughts and the, also the emotions. And when you're adding the, the sound frequency, the audible sounds, when you're adding the emotions and the thoughts, when we combine all that together, we create very, very profound and lasting results. So I've had some very, very good experience with this. I've been doing this for about five years, um, and my practice is called Source Frequency. 
So the name just came for me after I traveled to Egypt. I went to visit the Great Pyramids of Giza. I meditated inside the, the King's Chamber, played crystal bowls in there, had amazing experiences. And all these things started to come to me after I, I feel like I opened up like a portal that I was supposed to start doing this. And, you know, very loud and clear, Spirit said, what are you doing? You're not, you got a voice and you're not even using it. What are you doing? You know, you need to start speaking out and start singing. I, I've been a singer all my life and I play the piano, but I've kind of been like, you know, kind of shy and away from like doing anything with it. You know, I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever. I don't care. You know, I just want to party or whatever. But, you know, the spirit totally called me out. Dude, get out there and start sharing the message. I'm like, all right. So the pyramid that you see on the end of the hallway is, was channeled from the visit to the Egyptian pyramids. And it's in the exact same angles and alignments of the Egyptian pyramids. So I'm offering private sound sessions over there that you can lay inside this Egyptian pyramid that has been created with an organite capstone with actual granite that I collected from the Great Pyramids of Giza that were once on top of the pyramids. Is everybody aware that the pyramids were once a solid, like straight, like single, like granite pyramids on the top and that's the outer shell and uh, the inner layer is just what you see now is the stepstone, right? So as I was in Egypt, I climbed the pyramids themselves. I climbed up there illegally Right? I just ran up there because I was like, I got to do this, right? So it's that whole thing, uh, I'd rather uh, ask for forgiveness than permission kind of thing. So the Egyptian guards, their armed guards, right, with guns are chasing me up there. And something about spirit told me, just do it. This is your chance. Go ahead and go. So I just kind of played out. I'm a dumb American. I don't know. I'm just, I just want to take some pictures. So I ran up there. And I ran up there with a, I, you know, I paid a local guard, right? So I'm like, you know, I'm thinking this up. I'm like, yeah, go ahead and pay him. And he's going to take you up there and he'll take the rap. Because he didn't care. He wanted 20 bucks, 20 American dollars. He's like, heck yeah. So I'm like, dude, I want to go up this pyramid. Are you going to take me? He's like, all right. So we ran up there, halfway up there. And they're, sure enough, the Egyptian guard, blah, 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 just chasing us up there. And we're running up there. We get halfway up there. I'm like, yes, we made it. So he's like, give me your camera real quick. Hand him, hand him my camera. And the guy's like, oh, real quick, and he comes down, and he's like, taking pictures of us, and we're like, woo, real quick, and by then, the Egyptian guards grabbed him, like, raw, just like, reaming him. And I'm like, I'm sorry, sorry, we just wanted to take a photo, no problem, no problem, you know? Uh, so, while they were yelling at him, I looked down at my feet, and there was a rock that spoke to me and said, come down for a closer look, so... You know, I looked at them, and they were told, so, totally busy with him. And, and they were, like, literally right to where he was from where I was, except we're on a pyramid, so they're down, right? So they're down there, and I'm like, okay. So I was like, I'm going to kick this rock out. And I pulled, up, I pulled up a perfect sphere, a perfect sphere stone, right, that looked exactly like the Death Star. <laughs> I'm not joking. It was a gray-colored stone with an actual equator around it, like a line. And, and a dent in it where you can put your thumb in it. So just like the Death Star has that little dent, exactly that. I'm like, oh, so I shoved it in my bag real quick. I'm like, sorry, we're going around here. So the whole reason I was supposed to go up there was to grab this thing, right? The second I touched that, the second I went and went like that, boom, right into my consciousness, right into my third eye. I saw ancient Egypt as once the granite structure that it is being attacked with thousands of cannonballs Boom, 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 boom. Just hit and destroyed the outer layer of the pyramids. Totally saw all that right when I touched it. And I was like, holy, holy crap. I was like, dang, this is an ancient cannonball. So totally tapped into that. So that the pyramids are a powerful statement of the most you know, incredible engineered structure of all time because they were actually attacked by these huge, heavy, heavy, heavy cannonballs thousands of them. There's probably thousands of them in there right now. And I was just happened to be at that one particular part of, you know how big that thing is? I was in one little part and I was just exactly happened to be right at my feet where I, where I ran up, you know, being chased. So what are the odds of that of me finding that? So I brought it home with me and I've been working with it. I've been having people hold it everywhere I go. It's really powerful. But I also grabbed some of the fallen off granite that was there on the pyramids. So, and if, if you go today, you'll see all around the pyramids are just granite chunks, large chunks of like triangle-shaped granite pieces, right? So if you look at the stepstone, it's, it only makes sense that it, and it fits right there in the stepstone, right there to make it a solid pyramid. So anyway, I kind of went on a tangent there, but I was explaining what the pyramid actually has Egyptian alchemy in it. So you go inside and, and, and have one of those sessions, you will get to experience that. So we'll love to ring that in for you. 
on a deep molecular structure, it is even said that we are 99% water molecules. So does anybody know of the name Dr. Emoto Masuro? Yes. The Japanese scientist that did the water experiments? So I'm going to briefly express what he did in this a profound uh, realization of what we are and what we have the power to do. So what Dr. Emoto does, he, he, wanted, he experimented and he, he felt that water was actually alive. That, it, that it's a living thing, consciousness, right? So he wanted to express a uh, test on how um, our emotions and our thoughts, uh, uh, in conjunction with the water, how that relationship was, and how, how would he be able to do that? So he's like, all right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna you know, get two glasses of water, I'll separate them, and I'm gonna do one, one of them, I'm gonna give loving, beautiful thoughts and write beautiful messages on the water itself, like write actual thank you on the water, notes, uh, beautiful, um, forgiveness, peace, joy, all that. I'm gonna send all this water really, really good, beautiful thoughts. The other one, I'm gonna send it hate. Like, I'm purposely gonna hate this water and send how much you're ugly, all right? I hate you, war, whatever. I'm gonna send that to you. So he did it separately, the same glass of water, the same type of water from the same, like, fountain water or whatever. Um, so what he does after that, after however many days he did that for, um, he takes, a drop of water and freezes it, right, on a little dish, and then he looks it under a microscope, both of them. So the first one, that was the, the fear, the hate, the disgust, he looks at it and there was actually, there was, he looks it in the microscope and it's just kind of like a blob. No kind of form, no shape, or whatever, just like a, eh, just like a. The other one, he looks under the microscope, the love and the beauty and the joy, looks it under the microscope, on a deep molecular structure level, on the, the dish there was a beautiful, perfectly formed sacred geometry snowflake. Snowflake, it actually formed itself into what humans, I, I would say what well, snowflake is one of the purest things there is. It's never touched earth, it's never been contaminated by our toxic pollu polluted earth. It falls literally like from the sky, from the heavens, and it's a perfect snowflake. And I don't know anybody in the world that, that thinks that Oh, great, if there's snowflakes, I, those suck. I hate snowflakes. I've never heard of anybody that hates a snowflake, right? So, snowflakes represent the most pure form, right? The highest vibration. So he did this various experiments in the same type of way he did, like holy water that was blessed, and then he did like sewage water. Same type of thing, and same results. The blob, and then the perfect snowflake. So, as we are aware of that information, we are aware that we can literally restructure the molecules, the molecular structure of our own bodies, and thus our reality, right? So when we send ourselves good thoughts, or when we hear somebody give us a compliment, oh, you look great today, I love your hair, that's so good, that just feels good, right? And then when somebody says, oh, you suck, you know, well, that feels bad too, you know? So we're actually swimming in a soup of you suck, right? If, 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 we, if we entertain that idea, right? So we don't need to entertain those ideas. We can if we want, but the point is, we can entertain whatever idea we want, and we can be that idea. So I like to quote, um, whether you believe you can or you can't, either way, you're right, right? So the, every successful person that's on the world, every millionaire in the world, there's not one of those that, that thinks, eh, I don't know if I can do this, you know? I guarantee you there's not one millionaire on the world that's, that's, that's kind of second-guessing their, 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 their skills. They're, they're, like, they're like, no, I got this. I'm powerful. Um, I'm good at this. This is what I was born for. You know, this is what I do, and I deserve this money, you know? You know, everybody that has something of value, they know that they, they're connecting with it, that they deserve it, and that they are it, or whatever, in some form or fashion. Uh, one of the most powerful practices I've ever, ever done, out of all the amazing things I love to do, was to sit when I was totally depressed one time when my you know, fiance at one point left me and I was totally just at the rock bottom in 2012 and I was just totally like, I, I wanna die right now. And I was totally depressed and something, a new revelation came to me and I, I was just like, so so what, you're depressed? So be, sit in that depression and just see, sit with it and be with it and see what that feels like. And I just allowed it to totally consume me. Oh my God. And I just sat there, and I just was like, okay, uh, I'm depressed. That's, that's what's going on right now. And that's it. Not like, oh, jeez, I freaking hate life. You know, like, not, not, not having to blow it out of proportion. Um, 
I don't know the exact quote, but the thing, uh, the, the quote is something like this. Uh, all of your problems are not because of the, the problem itself. Your problems are a result of your attitude about the problem or your thoughts about the problem. So you're incessantly thinking, oh, oh my God, oh my God, she didn't call me, she didn't call me, oh, you're late, you know, oh, you know, just thinking about it. So I'm like creating a story about it. Well, that's not really what happened. What happened is what happened, and that's it. So one of the best things I ever did was able to do to overcome that depression was to, to let it come through, and it just came through, and it just like cried, and it cried, and it came through. Oh, and it was so powerful and juicy. Like depression is the one of the most juicy, powerful energies there is. It's like so, like whoa, like it's over, like almost overbearing. But when you like witness it for what it is, like man, that's powerful. That's some powerful stuff. Wow, I'm like feeling crazy right now. That's that's awesome. <laughs> but I'm like, it muster up that much energy. Okay, well, okay, I see that for what it is. Okay, I'm ready for something new. I'm I'm I'm, I'm down to experience something new. I am willing to see things another way. There's a powerful mantra for you. I'm willing to look at this situation another way. I don't know what it is, but I'm in, I'm in anger right now, or I'm in frustration, but I am willing. At least if you're willing, then you give it a chance, okay. The universe is like, okay, if you're willing, I'll show you what's something cool. How about this? Uh, you know, how about joy, how about excitement? Whatever, whatever comes through. How about laughter? And then something totally crazy happens and like totally blows you up and makes you laugh. But that's why I really believe those things happen. It's like those, those things that happen, like. You know, you're totally into stuff, and you're like, whatever, and then, like, somebody trips or something, and you're like, ah, and it just totally takes you out of it. Anyways, so cool. Uh, the other thing that I want to share about the signs of meditation is the breathing, the breath. So the most important nutrients that we need of all time, you know, people focus so much on, you got to have good food, good organic food, right? you got to have the best food, right? Put the best nutrients, the best fuel in your body. Well, you can go about two weeks, at least two weeks without food, if you have water, before you die. Water now, on the other hand, you know, people are like, purified water, you know, fresh spring water. Well, you can actually go like almost the whole week without water before you die. The breath, you cannot go like three minutes without the breath before you die. The most important thing that you need clean and awareness of is your breath. And that's why I think it's the most important thing about anything I say today is freaking breathe. Uh, and I need to tell myself this, and I, I blow up all the time. I'm like, dude, man, chill out, take a breath, pause, time out, time out, before I get a technical foul. Time out, take a breath. And it helps every time, I'm telling you. So if you forget everything I said today, take a pause and take a breath. Okay? All right.